Hello and welcome to highlights of the 2011 Formula Sim Racing World Championship. I'm Jack Nichols, and the big news this week was the cancellation of the Malaysian Grand Prix, which was red flagged 23 laps in. It will now be rescheduled and rerun at a later date in the season. As a result, the teams now move direct to Shanghai for the Chinese Grand Prix. 56 laps around the Herman Tilke design track await. This circuit features a very unique snail corner and an extremely long back straight. News from the paddock included the return of Formula World Champion Dennis Hurl, along with fellow German Karol Poniatowski and Italian Ernesto De Angelis, and the shock retirement of veteran driver Lee Morris, who has hung up the driving gloves after 35 World Championship starts. So to the qualifying results, and Bono Huis started from pole for the first time this season, followed by teammate Jako Mikkonen. Miko Pumalainen matched his best qualifying result to start in third, and John Eric Saxon put in another impressive performance to qualify fourth. Too Fast For You made up the third row of the grid, ahead of Poniatowski and Kirchhoff, with Room and Hurl in 9th and 10th. ATR Silverline couldn't quite manage to get inside the top 10, qualifying in 11th and 13th, and Patrick De Witt would start from 12th in his 50th Grand Prix start for faster than speed. To the race start, and all of the front runners had an essentially equal launch off the line. Miko Pumalainen managed to get alongside Mikkonen into Turn 1. Further back, Moran ran into the back of his teammate, and Tali ran wide off the track. Snaking through turns two and three, Mikanen held on to his second place, and David Greco slipped past both his teammate and Poniatowski. Hurl lost out to both Fott and De Witt, dropping down into 12th. Into turn six, Greco made another overtake, this time passing John Eric Saxon for fourth, and De Witt then passed Room to move up into 10th position. Blair Disley seemed to be struggling for traction, losing out first to Atze Kirchhoff and then Patrick De Witt, who was continuing an impressive charge up the field. After the opening lap, Kuis was in the lead ahead of Mikkonen and Pumalainen. Greco was up into fourth, just ahead of the Aero F1 cars of Saxon and Poniatowski. In seventh place, Atze Kirchhoff was leading De Witt and Blair Disley, who had lost four positions in the opening lap. Despite a good start, tenth place Ala Fott was clearly lacking in straight line speed, with both the GT Omega cars sailing past him on the back straight, quickly followed by Frederick Nielsen and then Dennis Hurl. It all went wrong for De Witt on lap 10, when he locked his brakes while defending into the hairpin, losing positions to both Disley and Room. However, out of the final corner, De Witt put his foot down too quickly and then lost two more positions to Keithley and Nielsen. Having been up into seventh place, the Dutchman was now down to 12th. Jack Keithley's race then ended two laps later, when the Englishman span his car out of turn 13, narrowly missing several drivers and stalling his engine. Further ahead, Twister driver Adse Kirchhoff caught up to the back of Poniatowski and passed the German to move him into sixth place. In the lead, Bono Huis was racing like a man in a league of his own, etching out a large gap over Mikkonen, who was being closely followed by Pumalainen in third. Greco and Saxon continued their lonely races in fourth and fifth position. Having started in 17th place, Frederick Nielsen's charge advanced further, with the Twister racer passing Disley and then Poniatowski to take sixth place. Having been held up for several laps, Disley desperately searched for a way around Poniatowski, and despite making a pass stick through the hairpin, a mistake by the Australian gave the position right back to the Aero F1 car. It would prove to be a costly mistake too, as Poniatowski then spanned his car out of turn 13, and with nowhere to go, Disley collided with the German, losing his front wing in the process. Pit stops made no difference to the running order at the front. Quis now had a 10 second lead over Jako Mikkonen, Pumalainen lost two seconds to Mikkonen through the stops, but he was still managing to match the pace of the precision driver. In fourth, David Greco was unable to catch the leading trio, and just behind Saxon and Kirchhoff remained in fifth and sixth. An early pit stop worked wonders for Rasmus Tali. Having started in 16th, the Estonian effectively leapfrogged five drivers, moving way up the order and into seventh position. Although we held on to the position ahead of Frederick Nielsen for several laps, the Twister car proved to be slightly faster, and Nielsen eventually found a way past Tali into the hairpin. In ninth position, GT Omega racer Reino Room was trying to hold off Dennis Hurl, but an earlier stop from Hurl proved to be the better strategy, and being unable to defend with cold tyres, Room was helplessly passed down the back straight on his outlap. In 11th place, Blair Disley was recovering after his earlier contact with Poniatowski. The Too Fast For You driver was slowly but surely bearing down on room, but was running out of time to close the gap to the final points paying positions. Alaphot was in 12th place with a struggling Karol Poniatowski immediately behind him. It was apparent that Poniatowski still had some suspension damage after his crash, and on lap 54 the German's rear tyre suddenly punctured, sending him careering into the tyre barriers. 
Taking his third win on the drop, Bono Fries won a perfect Grand Prix. Taking pole position, setting the fastest lap, leading from start to finish and winning by over a 20 second margin. Jako Mikkonen crossed the line in second place after a solid drive and Mikko Pumalainen earned his fourth career podium. A satisfied David Greco claimed fourth place and John Eric Saxon drove another impressive race to finish in fifth. After a troubled weekend, Twister Racing came sixth and seventh and an amazing charge from the back of the grid put Tali up into eighth. The Netrex cars finished in 9th and 13th, Reno Room picked up a point for GT Omega Racing and Disley finished just outside the top 10. ATR Silverline crossed the line in 12th and 14th and Jim Parisis and Giuseppe Marconi brought up the rear of the field. So after three rounds, Bono Huis now has the maximum possible 75 points and despite only finishing 4th, Greco remains in 2nd place. Mikanen is now close behind though and Pumalainen's podium has moved him up into 3rd. Tali has dropped down into fifth behind John Eric Saxon and Nilsson, Kirchhoff and Morand all remain inside the top ten. In the Constructors' Championship, Precision's 1-2 here at Gina has extended their lead to over 60 points. Matt Kaur have just overtaken Too Fast For You for second position, though only by three points. Twister Racing remain in fourth place and will need to achieve some strong results in the coming rounds to avoid losing touch with the other top teams. Aero F1 have continued with their impressive season start, running strong in fifth position. The next round will be the Turkish Grand Prix, and you can watch that race live as it happens. Simply go to www.psrtv.com on the 15th of May at 5.30pm GMT. We hope you've enjoyed today's highlights. I'm Jack Nichols, and we'll see you in a fortnight's time for round four of the 2011 Formula Sim Racing World Championship.